back to Linda's Pantry and a little bit of a canning chat as well as a, I'm going to do a taste test for you and kind of catch you up to speed on what's coming up and um, what I've got planned for this uh, fall and into the winter months as far as videos go. So uh, a lot of you have been asking how the pie filling came out and I'm going to tell you this is just my personal opinion. I've made apple pies from scratch. I've made apple pies from canned pie filling. I've made apple pies just about every way you can imagine. And they're all good, but I believe this is the best apple pie that I've ever made. And we had this for dessert last night. Now, I didn't have any because I'm not a huge dessert fan. Um, I'm just, I can pass it up. I'd rather eat the dinner. And, um, so a lot of you have been asking me about the texture of the pie filling and because I did not blanch my apples before I did my pie filling. So, um, and the reason I don't do that, when it's in the sh uh, clear gel, I leave it on the burner for longer than it calls for so it really heats the apples or whatever fruit you're doing, heats it all the way through and pretty much blanches it right in the gel and then I keep it really hot while I'm bottling it up and you get perfect, perfect pie filling. I'm not kidding. This came out so good and the blend of spices, mmm. So I'm going to taste this for you and let you know how, what the texture of this apple is like. Mm. Mm. You've got resistance, but not raw feeling at all, and not mushy at all. It's got perfect texture. You get the sweet and the tart. It's not overly sweet. And it's tart. It's got all the notes of the cardamom and the cinnamon, and oh my goodness, it is so delicious. My daughter-in-law commented on the texture of the apples last night and my husband had a huge helping. <laughs> so between the three of them, they ate half the pie. So I guess it was a winner winner. So that's the update on the pie filling. So if you haven't made apple pie filling and you're wondering, get that Amish cookbook, uh, the cooking, can cooking canning book. It is fantastic. and. I know a lot of you have already purchased it, but I'll leave a link down in the about section below. Uh, there's an Amazon link. Doesn't cost you any more. Helps our channel out when you purchase through any of those links. And even if you're not shopping for uh, an Amish canning book, maybe you're shopping for a Christmas present. If you click on that link and then put that in the search bar, we still get credit for it. And um, I, any of the fan funding and the Amazon money goes to a really good cause called my grandkids. So, um, and also helps this channel if we need to improve equipment or not. So, coming up, okay, we've got a festive fall dip coming right up next and uh, savory pumpkin dip. Ooh, you guys stay tuned for that. If you're not a subscriber, you need to hit the subscribe button right now. This dip is such a winner and everyone loves it and it's so different from everything else. If you like hot dips in the um, when you're watching football or let's say uh, Halloween is coming, a lot of people stay home and have kind of a, a snack night um, and while they're handing out candy, this is a perfect one to go along with that. So that video is coming up. We've got more canning coming up because I am low on a few things in the pantry. I'm low on beans. I did can up some black beans yesterday, but only five pints. So that'll get me through, you know, the next few weeks. Um, but I need pinto beans in there. I need, um, I've got a couple cans of chili beans, but I, I want to put up some more. It's very handy to have those over the winter months. My husband is an avid chucker hunter, and so when he leaves for the weekend, it's nice for me to grab a jar of this and a jar of that and tell him how to make dinner, and he can be in charge of dinner one night. Um, We've got gardening coming up. Believe it or not, our main garden is done. I mean, we've had frost. We've, we have had, actually had snow already this year, not enough to amount to anything, but we've had our hard frost. My fall garden beds are doing fantastic. So I'm gonna take you out to show you that when it's not so windy. 
uh, we've been picking lettuce, carrots, kale, and broccoli rob almost daily for salads. And I'm just using the leaves of the broccoli rob. I haven't actually got a shoot of broccoli rob yet, but the plants are healthy and it's kind of a bitter green. It's, it's nice to mix in with sweet greens. I did plant some spinach out there. I haven't seen any signs of it popping up yet, but we had pretty hard rains. I'm hoping it didn't wash the seeds away. So those videos are coming up. Dutch oven cooking. I'm going to put um, put it out there. You guys, what would you like to see me cook in the Dutch oven? Um, and I'm going to use the poll cards up in the I card above. I'm going to put a poll up there as far as Dutch oven cooking. I'm going to say, what would you like to see in the Dutch oven question? And then the answers I'll choose from, um, breads, which could include biscuits and cornbread and all that. Um, would you like to see entrees? desserts, um, side dishes, what, what, tell me what you want. So go ahead and take that poll and that's a fun and easy way and you can also leave your comments in the comment section and if you have a recipe that you really love and you want to share it with us, go ahead and do that as well because I think they let you p type as much as you want down there. So I like it when you guys uh, post recipes for us or leave a link to a recipe you like um, as long as it's not um, advertising, I don't mind at all um, d because you're, you're not just communicating with me, you're communicating with the whole community that surrounds Linda's Pantry. Okay, so we've got those videos coming up and unfortunately those are going to be fair weather videos because I, it, it can be cold out there, I'm okay with that, but I'm not okay if it's super windy um, because of the camera and or um, you know, if it's going to be raining or snowing. Um, it, we'll save those kind of videos. Maybe we'll do some more uh, uh, solar oven cooking when it snows so you guys can see how well they work even in the snow. They, they're just amazing. So I'm trying to think, is that all we've got coming up? I'm going to make some really fun fall type dishes for you. Um, I want to make sure that you guys know how to use your pantry. So we're going to be doing a lot of comfort food type meals and pantry dishes using our home canned pantry goods because that's how I work my pantry and I rotate things out. The dishwasher, it never has dishes in it really unless somebody else puts them in there. I see a couple glasses but the whole bottom rack is full of um, canning jars. So once the dishwasher is full, I know that it's time to do some canning because in one meal I might open three or four jars. A lot of you have asked for uh, or ask about canners. What canner should I get? And I'm going to gauge this because I have two Presto canners and I have and I used them for years and I absolutely loved them. I also have my All-American canners. And this one still has water in it, um, but that's good. I want to I want to actually talk about that and I'm super excited. OK, so this is my 10.5 quart All-American canner and I got this this year because the uh, the 921 quart that I have, it's it's heavy, it's big. If I if I'm canning, I cannot use the microwave while it's going because the handle goes above it. Um, I don't always need large batch canning. So like the other day, I only wanted to put four or five jars of beans up. I ended up, actually I put six jars of black beans, excuse me. This will hold six pint, one pint jars. This canner, for all of you that have been following me, this canner has gotten stuck every single canning session. And one of the reasons, and I've been asked this question, why would the lid get stuck? A lot of people are, well, you didn't put the Vaseline or the oil on here. And I even had one of my subscribers, hers got stuck, so she called um, the All-American and they said she should use oil on this. And it, it's a seeding problem. So it, that's why you want to, when you're... Um, putting your canner lid on, if it looks cattywampus because you can see, you can tip it one way or another pretty easily. And if it's tipped one way, let's say you started screwing a handle down over here and then one over here instead of across from each other, it can tip that lid and then it will get stuck. 
But that, I had an issue trying to get it straight. This time I felt like I got the lid on perfectly. It didn't get stuck, it came right off. I was so excited. So, you know, it, and to me it wasn't that hard to take the claw hammer and pop the lid anyways. That's how you get them unstuck. Now this canner still requires three inches of water and I measure my fingers about three inches long. And after doing the beans for 75 minutes, according to the ball directions and my altitude, I always add time. But um, literally, I've got about an inch of water left. So it goes through a lot of water. And you think, well, the smaller canner shouldn't need as much water as the big canner. And absolutely it does. And it's not in volume, it's not as much water, but it needs it, trust me. So I've been asked over and over would what kind of canner to recommend. So if you have a gas stove, you can have either a, and I have gas, you can have either the All-American canner or the Presto canner. Now, if you have a glass top stove, the All-Americans are not made for a glass top because the bottom is completely flat. The Presto has, it's kind of raised up and the edges here are, are slanted up so it's up off the uh, flat top. They're safe to use as long as you don't leave them sitting on the burner. After you've turned them off, you need to move them to another burner and a full canner of seven quarts of something can be heavy. Um, I honestly, because I can have either and I can use this outside, I can use it on my Camp Chef uh, I can use it, I mean, I could use it over an open kettle if that, you know. The Presto canners are not recommended for um, high output like the Camp Chef. The BTUs are too high there. For, to use so that. So that would be, I, I'd kind of evaluate your needs and your situation before I make a decision. As far as Cadillacs of canners, knowing that I've had Prestos, and I, and I actually, um, my mom's old pressure canner, I don't remember what, um, it wasn't a Presto, it was something else, but uh, she had it forever and, and I got to use that as well. So they, these canners, every one of them are a little bit different. My favorites are the All-American. This little one is actually my very favorite, but I still love the bigger version and because uh, I can stack pint jars in there and um, I can do, you know, seven quarts at a time. If I have a huge batch of stuff, let's say I've, I want to do um, 11 quarts of something, I just bring out this little guy too and I can do a big batch of soups, let's say. I want to do, you know, a, a whole big batch of soup for the winter and put almost a dozen jars away. I'd just pull out another canner. So that's my advice on canners. Um, advice on dehydrators, I still would choose an Excalibur over what I have currently, but until that little dehydrator takes the, you know, kicks the bucket, I'm going to stick with it. And um, let's see what else is coming up and what have I been asked lately. I'm trying to put together not just a series on Dutch oven cooking, but I thought it would be okay to put together a series of um, home canned pantry meals. And, and I challenge, I'm going to challenge a couple other YouTubers to um, join in this as well because I really believe that if you're trying to be prepared for not being able to go to a grocery store or you're just trying to be more self-reliant and process your own food, you should be able to cook a really nice meal from anything you have in your pantry. And a lot of us struggle with that. I know in the very beginning of my canning and, and really rotating my pantry with my home canned goods, I struggled. I put it in there and I didn't want to touch it. And then a year later, you're like, I don't know what to do with it. So uh, once I started using it in my everyday life and not going to the grocery store, let's say for black beans, I can black beans. This, I got um, three pounds of black beans on clearance in a one pound bag and they were 50 cents a bag. One pound makes six pints. I don't count the cost of my jars because I reuse them over and over again. I'm not filling the landfill, landfill with tin. And I put a really economical product on my shelf. So um, if you need to save money in, 
overall, the initial investment costs money, but once you've got your stock of jars and you've got your canners, it's easy and it's inexpensive to have healthy, wholesome food. A, a lot of misconceptions. I've been watching some canning videos lately, and I, I love all of them. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call anybody out, but I saw some here lately that I felt were. They should have had a disclaimer attached to them because they did not follow canning procedures that are deemed safe. Now, we all veer from that, and I, whether everybody wants to admit it or not, we all do things that um, it, may, it may not be an approved recipe. Um, I kind of think that if I've used the recipe for years, it's approved for my family. Um, and I would always put a disclaimer out there for you guys. But there's been a couple of canning videos lately that have been a little bit uh, edgy on whether what they're canning and how they're doing it is really safe. So I only recommend that you get a reputable source like the ball canning book, the um, go on to the National Home Food Preservation website. You can go on almost any university will have uh, a canning section that you can resource approved recipes that have been tested. That way you're not testing on your family, if, if that makes sense. And the other misconception is a lot of people think that you have to have salt for, that that's gonna help preserve the food. And if the process isn't safe, the salt isn't gonna make it safe. All that is for is for flavor. It is not for preservation. If you were, um, you know, if you're drying meat or something like that, that's different. But in a canning process, it has nothing to do with whether the stuff is gonna be shelf stable or that it's gonna be safe for your family to eat just because you put salt in it. So I hope that this answers some of the questions you guys have been having. I hope it gives you a little bit of an update and I, I'm looking forward to the upcoming week. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait to show you the next recipe because it's starting to smell really good in here. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.